The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Trader's Edge with Steve Rhodes. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. The Trader's Edge. Now, Steve Rhodes. Good morning, folks. Welcome to the September 25th, the marvelous Monday edition of today's Trader's Edge Show. I'm your host, Stevie Perseverance Rhodes, who absolutely knows that each of us should always be pioneers of our future versus prisoners of our past. Hope everyone out there is having a great day. Hey, let's make sure we have an extraordinary one. Now, the easiest way to do that is to always remember that life is happening for us, not to us. That's right. When you and I make that one little two by four shift, means we can find the gift in every set of circumstance that life is going to toss at us. Now, today, you and I, we're going to go check on the circumstance of these markets. We'll go figure out what those bulls and bears, what those buyers and sellers are communicating to you and I at just past 11 o'clock in the morning. I want you to know I'm absolutely grateful for your presence here. But even more important than that, and that's this. During this next 53 minutes, I am here to serve you. So feel free to pick up that phone, dial on in at 877-927-6648. Now, if you can't dial in, you've got a question, we've got you covered. Go ahead and send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. And inside the subject heading, please put radio show question. Now, if you're inside our Tiger's Den, well, then any and every ping will do. So let's go ahead and get this show started on magnificent, marvelous Monday. Of course, this is Tiger Financial News Network. I'm Steve Rhodes. Welcome to the show. A slightly mixed bag out there as we begin the hour. You got the Dow off 148, the S&P down 8, NASDAQ's off 26. Russell is just up slightly. It's flat. The semis are flat. The trannies are up 89 points. New York Stock Exchange off 54. Gold's down 9 bucks. Silver's up 50 cents. And a 30-year Treasury is down 1 point and 21 ticks. Trade down at 115.08. You've got lights recruit off 78 pennies. Trade down at 89.27 or so. And natural gas is up 1 penny. Trade at 265. Leading the charge dollar-wise, the upside today, we've got William Sonoma up 12 bucks. That's a 9% move. Super Micro is up 5 bucks, 2%, 11% for C Limited, and FedEx is up five, and Vidi is up five as well. To the downside, it's Morphic Holdings up about ten dollars, twenty-five percent move there. Charter Communications off eight fifty, nearly two percent. Lululemon down nearly eight bucks or two percent. BlackRock a five dollar move, that's less than one percent. And Posco Holdings a five percent, that's a five dollar move to the downside. Of course, I want to look at what you want to look at. So, what do you want to look at? Well, let's start like we have lately. Let's take a look at where we're at with regard to market breadth. So, with regard to market breadth, we're going to start with the thirty-minute time frame. Thirty-minute time frame here this is for the s&p 500 125 above 198 below above what above profile above resistance below what below support the bottom of profile market breadth for the s&p 500 is bearish let's take a look at the ndx 100 out here momentarily we have that up on our screen and I, I don't know, I'm not going to assume anything. You've got 29 above, 37 below. So for the 30-minute time frame, market conditions from a market breast standpoint are bearish. Now we take a look at the other four time frames, 60 minute, 240, daily, weekly. What we're going to see out here is just extreme bearishness, if you will. Each of those uh, dial speed dials that we take a look at are in the negative position, the bearish position. If we take a look at the NASDAQ 100, we've got the same thing. So we know that market breadth across the board right now is bearish. That says watch any of these counter trend rallies because at this stage here they should be sold into but we want to take a look at the bigger picture of the market as well because we are in oversold conditions how do we know that well we take a look at that advanced decline oscillator in the new york stock exchange what we'll see is that got down to the minus 150 level did that on thursday when we were last together right now you're trading out at 138 out here so at some point in time you've got to expect an oversold rally to take place is it right here right now i don't think so but we'll take a look at other charts to try to figure out when that could or should happen out here if we take a look at the equity future contracts out here this is important because on friday what we got from the s p 500 via the es mini is a change in trend let me get rid of the a to b equals cd pattern that'll make it easier to see what do you mean we got a change in trend signal on friday stevie well if you take a look at this now this is my synthetic version of the contract out here that way it allows me to stitch together all prior contracts 
contracts in a better way than if I were to use the continuous. And this allows me to take a look at market profiles. Now, sometimes these market profiles are often they're slightly different than if I were to take a look at the December contract as an example. It doesn't matter. They still work out here. And if you take a look at those blue arrows out there, you'll see that on the move up, since March of 2020 out here, again, we're looking at a weekly time frame. You can see that all the pullbacks found support at the bottom of those weekly profiles. Now, when I say all, I'm referring to until the market topped out here in the December of 2021. Then what do we see? We see that the month or the week of uh, January 17th, the week that began January 17th, we saw a close below. That gave us our change in trend signal out here. And that's what took place on Friday. That doesn't mean we don't get bounces. In fact, if we were to get a bounce, the ideal bounce to really sell into from more of an intermediate term standpoint that is if we believe that the market is going to head much lower out there would be selling at about the 4483 level that is the center of the bullish structured weekly profile as calculated using stevie's synthetic uh, symbols out here. Now, if we take a look at the equity future contracts from a daily standpoint, that was just, a, it's only the ES mini that we're focused on with regard to that change in trend signal. We take a look at the daily time frame for the ES mini. What do we have? We have an A to B equals CD to the downside. That one to one price projection is 4310. So we'll keep that in mind as we, because we will take a look at the other tools that we use out there, such as the TD9 count patterns, roads meant to indicator signals, and we'll look at those for the daily time frames. With regard to the NASDAQ, the NASDAQ is where you could really see that counter trend move, that oversold condition rally from. Why? Because right now it has not passed. It has not closed below its key swing point. On the ES, the Dow, the YM, the Russell 2000, they each have, but not the NQ. We know that the NQ can pull markets lower, and they can also pull markets higher. So what we're watching for there is 14,792.75. The low so far today has been inside the NQ has been 14,782.25. So that level has been tested, that swing point. Do we get a test and rejection? If we do, that could be the signal that we're getting ready for that little counter trend rally out there. If we take a look at the Dow equity future contract, you can see that on Thursday, Wednesday of last week, no, Thursday of last week, that generated the A to B equals CD down pattern. You got to follow through on Friday. We're trading below Friday's low right now. It's one to one price projection would take us down to about 33,740. Now, when I give you these one to one price projections, that doesn't mean that's exactly where price is going to turn around from. That's just the first level of that price projection area. Inside the Russell 2000, Weak, even though it's trading just slightly higher today, you can see it's confirmed A to B equals CD to the downside. And that first initial price projection is at 1766.40. So that's what we see when we take a look at these charts out here. Let's go flip over. We'll take a look at Stevie's other charts. So give me a moment here. We'll get over to that. Let's see. Uh where did I put those? Uh, daily equity future. Let's go ahead and change screens out here. And momentarily, what you'll see is my white background screens. What you want to pay attention to there are going to be the TD9 counts. What you'll see is today is going to form bar number seven for the ES, the NQ, for the Dow, and for the Russell 2000. So we've got A to B equals CD down patterns inside the ES, the YM, and the Russell 2000, not just yet inside the NQ. Perhaps what it's going to be, it's going to be a TD9 count bottom pattern. The earliest that that could form would be tomorrow. It would be between Tuesday and Thursday. So I would say we need to prepare between Tuesday and Thursday at this stage for a potential counter trend move to work off that oversold condition inside the equity markets. Steve Rhodes with TFNN. We'll be right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. 
You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the Opening Call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors call, call now toll free at 1-877-927-6648 internationally at 727-873-7618 So we got the Dow trading out 43, the other U.S. indices other than the New York Stock Exchange up uh, slightly out here. Uh, we're going to go take a look at the IWM. This is for Dizzle inside the uh, traders' uh, den out here. And if we take a look at the IWM, first thing you'll notice is you'll see that A to B equals CD to the downside. It's both on the daily and the weekly out here. I'm showing that on that center chart, the weekly chart. So the one-to-one -one gets us down into, well, let me see if I can actually give you the exact number here. IWM, the uh, the First price target is 175.05. 175.05 would be the uh, one to one price projection level. You are also in bar number eight. So we just took a look at the uh, U.S. equity future contracts. We saw that each of them were forming bar number seven today. When you do get to bar number eight, which we have right now in the IWM, 90% of the time, this will go ahead and complete a TD9 count. Now, you've got to get bar number nine. In order to get bar number nine, price got to close below the close of bar number five. That seems like a likely outcome out here, but you never know inside these markets. In order for that to happen, that means that next week, you would need to see a close below. Why can't I pull that up? There we go. A close below 183.92 out there. So on a weekly basis, it says, okay, prepare for some type of potential bottom out there. That bottom not forming until this week or possibly two weeks out from now. Now we look at the daily time frame chart. Remember, we looked at the equity future contract. We'll see bar number seven also forming today. We're trading below yesterday, uh, yesterday, Friday's low out there. So this is not a bullish signal or what have you, just this little rally that we've got, at least not that Stevie sees. And on a monthly time frame chart, you'll see that price is pulling back into its bullish structured support area between 170.64 and 173.82. So I would say right now at this stage here, Either you get a bullish reversal candle, and if you get that, that would then confirm an A to buy the D point pattern. Short of that, you'd want to wait at least for a TD9 count, and that cannot take place again until between tomorrow and really Thursday. It's between Tuesday and Wednesday that's going to be the key levels out there. But once, if we do get a successful bar number eight, that means a lower move tomorrow out there as well. Then we could be getting towards where we would see this little counter trend rally to work off these oversold conditions out there. So that's the review of the IWM. Now, if we take a look at it on a 30 minute base out here, so I'm looking at the equity, or I'm looking at the actual IWM, not the equity future contract out here. What we'll see as we do, whoops, I deleted it. Okay, skip that. Well, maybe I didn't delete. Let me check one thing here. That was pretty smooth, wasn't it? 
Mm, let's try this. Is that pulled up? There we go. So if we take a look at the IWM for its 30-minute time frame out here, what we will see is we did generate, or it did generate, a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom at 10 o'clock. But all price was able to do was really get up into its profile level, its resistance zone between 177.27 and 177.61. So in order for the IWM on a 30-minute basis to get any kind of legs out there, the sellers, firstly, they're sitting between 177.27 and 177.61 out there. So price got to close above 177. 7761 for any rally to have any kind of possible legs. We're just looking at that 30 minute time frame chart as we speak right now. So, Dizzle. I hope that helped you out with regard to the IWM. It's a twofer out there because Dizzle also wanted to take a look at the 30 year treasury. So, if we take a look at the 30 year treasury, let me see if I've got this on my other screen as well, just to get a better overview of what it's doing out here. Uh, I don't have it, but I can. Nah, I won't pull it up. Uh, just uh, I'll, I don't need to at this stage. So let's go take a look. You know, Dizzle's interested in short-term trading out here. So if we take a look at the, uh, if we take a look at the 30-year treasury. We look at the daily time frame. We'll just simply expand this chart out. Looks like we were talking about a lot of TD9 counts today, and in fact we are. So here, what we'll see is the 30-year treasury today is going to form bar number eight of a TD9 count. So that says we could see some type of bottom between today and Wednesday out there. Now, what we can see is we're trading below Friday's low out there. So that's not a bullish signal. We didn't even in the rally that to, the, today we didn't take out Friday's high at all. Didn't even get up to Friday's high out there. And we're trading below that red oscillator and change line. That is a bearish signal. The longer term picture is that the 30 year treasury wants to head lower. How much lower? Quite a bit lower. Um, but again, I'll try to pull up those charts. Maybe we'll come back to it. If we don't do it today, we'll certainly do it tomorrow out here. So what do you wait for? Well, that's the daily time frame chart. Let's take a look at what's going on on the other charts out here. Remember, when you get towards a bottom pattern on a larger time frame, you like to get confirmation of that bottom in the shorter term time frame charts. You'll start seeing the turns in the shorter time frame charts. So as an example, because Dizzle is a short term trader out here, let's just look at a 10 minute time frame chart out here. So the 10 minute chart shows what? It shows wave number seven. That's courtesy of Basil Chapman. It shows a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom and shows a rally with inside its profile level. So Dizzle, one of the things I would suggest if you're trading this stuff intraday, Go ahead and get a subscription to the TAS market profiles out there. They're going to assist you with understanding perhaps why price stops where it does or why it finds support where it does because we're the buyers and sellers. So if you're an intraday trader, I'll tell you the TAS market profiles are totally worth it. They're totally worth it anyways, but certainly on an intraday basis, you'd certainly want to get access to that. So right now we just see a little bit of a bottom and a consolidation with inside of profiles. Nothing more there. Let's go take a look at some longer term charts. Well, geez, longer term on a 10 minute, what would that be? 15 minute chart out there. What do we have? We've got a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. We've got price just consolidating with inside of its profile. 30 minute time frame. We've got a negated TD9 count bottom. And that says we had a TD9 count bottom that formed right here at 10 o'clock. And guess what? At 1030, that was toast. Negated that signal. That tells about strong momentum move to the downside. What could change Stevie's picture? On a 30 minute time frame, we would be closing above that red oscillator and change line. 60 minutes got a TD9 count. Out here. So the 60 minute will complete bar number nine at uh, 12 noon. Now that pattern will not complete until 1 p.m. because that low can take place on the bar following bar number nine. But there's some potential there. There's some potential on the 120 minute chart, which also in bar number nine. Now this candle right now as we speak, well, this will not complete until I think it's noon. Let me make sure. Yeah, 12 noon out there. So that says you could get some type of short-term bottoming signal. But those are on those intraday charts out there. You really need that daily chart. If you're going to start trading the 30-year treasury to the upside, you've really got to see a bottoming signal on the daily time frame. And I'm afraid that we really just don't have that as we speak right now at 1125 in the morning. So my suggestion now, if we go take a look at the larger time frame, I think I still have those charts up. We'll switch over to those screens out here. Uh, yeah, we do. And here you're going to be able to see that monthly time frame chart. So on a longer term basis, the monthly chart is going to negate a buy the D point pattern, or it looks like it will. All it needs to do is close below the low from October, the month of October of 2022 out there. And right now we're well below that area. So this is suggesting a lower price. On a weekly basis, you'll see the A to B equals CD to the downside. That doesn't uh, complete until we get towards the 107 level. Now, let me expand this out a bit. What we can also see out here, though, is we are in wave number seven. That is letter G out there. On a weekly basis, that says you can't get a confirmation of that wave seven pattern until the end of next week because you have to have a higher low out there. But it's got potential. 
you've got a rodent indicator signal that's also present. I would prefer a weekly bullish reversal candle to suggest any kind of a bottom. We already took a look at the daily. No reason to go anywhere else out there. So longer term, everything is still driving to the downside out there. Be careful on any of those intraday trades. And if you are placing those intraday trades, go out and get that uh, TAS market profile tool out there. So Dizzle, I hope that helped you out with both the Russell 2000 and the 30-year Treasury. We get back from this breakout here. We're going to go take a look at Goldman Sachs. That's for Dan inside the Tiger. Den. Of course, folks, I'd love to hear from you as well. 877-927-6648 or send me an email. Send that off to Steve at TFNN.com. We'll be right back. Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text, either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer. But the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th, from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. Hey, before we take a look at Goldman Sachs, we're going to go out to Ormond Beach and speak with Mike. Mike, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you doing today? Steve, I'm doing great. I'm looking at GM on yep. a daily chart, yep. and as of now, it looks to me like we have a piercing signal. What are your thoughts about that? Do you think we have a, a good tradable bottom in GM? So 
What we have on GM right now, what it's also doing today, Mike, it's testing that swing point. I'm sure you're aware of that. It's testing that swing point from September 7th. Now, that swing point had volume of about 12.2 uh, million shares. So far, in the first two hours of trading, we've done 2.3 million shares. So if we just multiply that times two and a half out there, we're going to be lighter volume and test net swing point. And that's a bottom pa uh, pattern that it was. That was a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom that was uh, formed back on September the 7th. So you've got a swing point that's being tested and it appears to be rejected. Now, we won't know till day's end, right? In order for this to be rejected, right. you've got to see a close above 32.62 today. We're at 32.87. And it's trading into the bottom of its daily profile. So for me, it's a little bit too early. If the, if the market were to close a minute from now, I would say the answer to your question is yes, it's tradable with a choppy market ahead with resistance at its profile levels. Those are distal profile levels. So at the bottom, I don't know if I gave you that, but let me just give you all three of them. The bottom is 32.82. So you'd certainly like to see a close above that on top of the rejecting that swing point. You also then, if it were to do that, then where you've got battles, Mike, is at 33.23 and 33.63. If price can clear 33.63, what you'd be looking for is how is it trading into that September 15th swing point? That's where it's got letter B on my screen out there. That's September 15th swing point has got about 20 million shares so you'd want to see price pushing into that if not you might just have sideways action out there right if we take a look at the daily time frame chart you and i we can draw in a sideways consolidation pattern right now so no idea whether that's going to break or not but the consolidation is pretty easy to see we could just i'm just going to roughly draw it in here right now so that's what we're looking at so you know so is it a tradable bottom it appears that it is. Is it a tradable bottom that's going to take it much, much higher? That I don't know. If we take a look at the – so first, before I go to the weekly or anything, because your specific question, Mike, was about the daily time frame, what, what, what additional yeah. questions are now posed in your mind after that review, at least on the daily time, time frame? Yeah, I'm ex uh, – Steve, I was expecting it to you know, possibly bounce from here at least up to your oscillator on change line. Okay. And uh, – Take it, you know, evaluate it at that area and then take it from there. That was that was my plan, of course, with a very tight stop. OK, so what what uh, what Mike would be looking at, he'd be looking at the weekly chart. He'd be looking at the oscillator and change line there. We can see that's up at thirty three seventy five. We can see the last two weeks found resistance as price got into that area. So, yeah, we can call this a tradable bottom. Of course, you want to see it still close above that swing point. So it could close it out at the end of the day if it closes inside that swing point. Otherwise, yeah, I would say a move up towards that 3375 level would make some sense. Now, General Motors on a 30-minute time frame, just to help add to our analysis here, we can see that uh, you also ask, was today's candle so far a piercing candle? It is, but I don't think whether it's a piercing candle, a bullish candle or not today, is that important? It's more about rejecting that swing point. I would think, and right. then closing about, you know, closing at least inside that market profile. Now, the 30-minute time frame shows that price is trading above its profile level. So this is suggesting to you and I that we should see a further rally out here, at least based upon that 30-minute time frame chart. So, Mike, any other questions or anything else that I can assist you with with regard to General Motors or anything else for that matter? Uh, no, that's it. I just uh, I saw this and uh, I just wanted your opinion to back up my opinion so thank you very much sure so the last thing that i'll share with you here if you do get into that trade if we just take a look at the consecutive days up consecutive days down right now you and i were interested in the consecutive days up over the last uh, couple of weeks out here, you've only gotten uh, you've gotten two three bar moves and two two bar moves out there. So I would expect that this rally doesn't last a whole lot longer. Maybe it gets up to that price target that you were looking at at that thirty three seventy five ish area. All righty. Thank you very much, Steve. You bet. That was Mike in Ormond Beach. Folks, I'd love to hear from you as well at 877-927-6648. Let's go take a look at uh, Goldman Sachs. This is for ABCD inside the Tiger's Den. So we'll pull up that chart. And uh, what Dan is looking for, he's looking for a longer-term trade out here. Now, when I say longer term, I'm referring to maybe about one to two months. So as we take a look at Goldman Sachs, what do we know? We know that Goldman Sachs formed a sell the D-point pattern. It uh, formed that pattern right here on the trading day of September the 19th. You can see the A to B point, and then this was more than a one-to-one -one move. Well, the A to sell the D point pattern 
uh, closed on Thursday of last week below the bottom of its profile. The bottom of that profile was 333.93. It also closed below a red oscillator and change line out there. So conditions on a daily time frame for Goldman Sachs are bearish. The question is, where is price going to find support? Well, then it turns out that one support level could be 325.21. That's the center of its bearish structured daily profile. The reason why that could be could be support, it's, it's questionable whether that's support or not. We did get more than two consecutive days above that. But then price pulled back, it broke through that back on the week of August 25th out there. So how reliable is that as a support area? Well, it's still a profile where you have both buyers and sellers that exist out there. It's got potential. But we need to see something more than just that. On a monthly basis, Dan, you've just got a good old-fashioned consolidation with inside its profiles right now. That's between 291.32 and 358.73. So back to the daily time frame. What's the daily time frame doing? Well, right now, with regard to Goldman Sachs, so far the volume to the downside today is about uh, – 271,000 shares. So my eyes right now are on this swing point out here. The swing point that I'm referring to is from September the 6th. That's one level to be looking at. We can also see that the swing point, that's really the major swing point, is down at August 23rd. So those are levels. So August 23rd is high out there. Let's pull that up. 322.45. The other swing point out here, the high of it, is at 324.15. So those are areas to watch. Now, that swing from September 6th did volume of 2.1 million shares. The uh, swing point from back on August 23rd did 1.4 million shares. So far today, again, 274, so it's pulling back on light volume. Ideally, what you would do is at least get a test of that swing point from, of the high of that swing point at least, from September 6th. If you get down, you test the 324.14 level, you do it less than 2.1 million shares that could be it would be a rejection of price that could be a, a buy point out there because you would then still have a higher low out there that's what the daily time frame chart is signaling to and i what else can we find out about goldman sachs well we take a look at goldman sachs here what we'll see is that we've had four consecutive days to the downside out there so if we do get a rally today how long should that rally last well, we can see the last two rallies out here dan off of its bottom off of its recent lows they lasted for three consecutive sessions out there so if we do get that higher close today what we're looking at is potentially a rally of two to three days out there that's with regard to goldman sachs what else can we find out well let's take a look at a 30 minute time frame chart see if there's any kind of a signal out here and on a 30 minute basis for goldman sachs what you've got is a roads momentum indicator bottom that took place at 10 o'clock this morning when it generated that bullish hammer candle right now if at uh, 12 noon price closed above the top of its profile that's at 328.31 dan that suggests that price would want to run up to the 322.43 but you're looking for the two to three month trade out there Right now, all I'm looking at is this being a possible counter trend move. Maybe, maybe, well, I'll tell you what, we'll take a look. I'll see if I can get any seasonal data for you, and we'll take a look at that when we get back from this break. Steve Roach from TFNN. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 
45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the Direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact Direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. So we're taking a look at Goldman Sachs out here. And, Dan, unfortunately, I don't know why, but the uh, seasonal data uh, for Goldman Sachs just isn't uh, isn't there. So I don't have anything there to provide. But your comments here inside the Tiger's Den, uh, if we do get a bounce, the level to sell to into, which is what I guess you're looking for, the level to sell into would certainly be in that 332, 333 range. 332.18 right now is at Oscillator and Change Line. And 333.93 is the bottom of that daily profile. So that would be your resistance zone to sell into. To. Maybe we get that two to three day bounce out here inside of Goldman Sachs. And so you can also use that daily consecutive moves higher as well to try to tie that in. So I hope that helps you out. And I uh, thanks so much for the request out there. The next request coming in from Bogart Dog inside the Tiger's Den. And Bogart Dog would take the take like to take a look at Eli Lilly. Ticker symbol here is LLY. As we take a look at it right now, what we know is that price a couple of days ago, that was on Thursday, got back and tested and rejected that breakout level, 543. So this formed a TD9 count top. It pulls back to a key level of support that has held. There's no bottom signal there, and Bogart is trying to add to his position. Sometimes pulling back to a breakout level is, in fact, a buy point. So you're looking to add that 543 level looks pretty good. Now, you're in bar number seven, like the equity markets are out here, right? We're saying that a TD9 count pattern could form between uh, tomorrow and Thursday out there. So what I would do, and Eli Lilly is saying almost the same thing, when I say almost, the reason I say almost Bogart is because right now the low of this pattern is on bar number five. That was from two days ago. So price must spike below that. Well, really, it's got to do a couple different things. So it, first, it's got to spike below that level. So let me give you that. That's 542.50. The second, this is bar number seven. Bar number nine, so that's a couple days from now, would have to close below this low out here, and that's 550.13, this low being from September 21st. So I think you've got to sit tight for a couple of days, watch how the market plays out, watch the equity markets as well. It would be ideal, because you're trying to add to a position, to get a TD9 count bottom pattern out there. And again, that's going to require some additional moves lower, or spikes lower out there. So now I don't know that that's going to be the pattern that's going to form, but I think it is more appropriate to try to tie in a long position here inside the equity markets as well but remember it could just simply be just a counter trend move out there what do you mean it could only be just a counter trend move well it could be or it couldn't be so let's take a look at this here actually let me put up Eli let me see if I can get information on Eli Lilly out there I couldn't get it on Goldman Sachs but how about Eli Lilly there we go. So we do have Eli Lilly. So we can take a look at its seasonal patterns. As far as data, we've got 20, 51 years worth of data for Eli Lilly. Now, we know that Eli Lilly struggles in July, August, and September out there. Those are its kind of the three worst months out here. February is not really that great as well, at least over a 51-year period. 
So if we take a look at this, and September is always pretty poor. Now, what this suggests, though, seasonally, is that that bottom, from a seasonal standpoint, doesn't really come in until the October time frame. Usually around October the 26th out there. So maybe because you already have a position, you just consider this as well. So what's going on in the general markets out there? Well, if we take a look at the general markets, by general markets, what I'll do is I'll use the S&P 500. So we take a look at the S&P 500 out here. We can go back a total of, what, 95 years. In 95 years, what we can see here for the S&P 500 is September is horrible. But what we also see is that it typically forms that bottom in mid to late October out there. So from an ad, ad standpoint, because I take it this is a longer term trade, you may want to just sit on your hands for a while out there. So I hope that helped you out. Bogart Dog with regard to Eli Lilly. Thanks so much for the request. Let's go to our caller. That's John in Philly. John, thanks for calling. Thanks for holding. How are you today? Steve, I'm doing uh, very well. Thanks for taking thanks. the call. Um, you have had a busy month just past, uh, what was it, wedding last Friday and Japan trip uh, just before that? But my wife and I are looking forward to no travel. We've got one more thing that we are going to do a couple weeks from now, two weeks, uh, not necessarily this coming week, but next week. And then uh, we'd like to just stay, not be in an airport any longer. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm not holding my breath on that one, my friend. <laughs> uh, we'll see. We'll see. We're tired. Of, we're tired of travel. <laughs> we're tired of travel. But uh, and last so, night yeah. was just a terrible flight. So uh, we're just we didn't get back till really late, but uh, early this morning actually. In any event, I know you want to take a look at silver. So let's talk about that. Tell me what you're doing and how I can best help you. <laughs> actually, uh, I did call to ask you about silver. Oh, um, sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I think with uh, your man Al, I asked about the e mini S and P's, but ah, you've, okay. uh, you've gone you've gone through and described what you're seeing on the index futures. Yes, and you just uh, you just shared the seasonal tendencies. Yes, so um, uh, that would all point to being aware of the possibility of a bottom forming sometime in the next weeks. Yes, but, um, so uh, so we can tuck that one away. Uh, in that context. But what I wanted to ask you, Steve, now that you've been back a week from your uh, global travels. Yes. Um, and I ask this question to you infrequently, but here it goes. Are, are other than the stock market indices, for the reasons you just described, are there any other markets look that you're looking at uh, either topping in here or bottoming in here that would offer potentially good multi-week trades, you know, looking ahead the next four to eight weeks? That's my question for you. And it, you, you certainly may have nothing, but I thought I'd ask it nonetheless. Okay, so let me ask you this. Which soybean contract would you be trading? If I were to, because I'm, because that's where I'm going to go. You're asking about any market out there. And I do recall looking at soybeans having formed a TD9 count uh, pattern. So if we were going to go into soybeans right now, which contract would you trade? November? Definitely the November contract. No, okay. Okay. November contract up through October 20. Okay, so let's go take a look at the November contract out here. And uh, what we'll see is that today, I'm just going to simply expand this out. So the potential trade that I see right now, and I know you like to trade soybeans as well, so you probably were already on top of this, is that today is going to complete a TD9 count bottom pattern. So what we'd want to see out here is we'd want to see on the intraday charts, we'd want to see some type of bottoming patterns. So from an intraday chart standpoint, I'll just simply go to a 30-minute chart. And a 30-minute chart confirmed a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom at 11 o'clock. It's now 11.49 out here. So you've got one potential there. The 60-minute time frame chart looks like by 12 noon will also confirm a Rhodes momentum indicator bottom. On the two-hour chart and on the four-hour chart and on the five-hour chart, all of each of those just simply need bullish reversal candles to confirm a bottom out here. So I would say, John, I would take your work that you typically do, and I would focus in on the uh, soybean contract, the November soybean contract, because at this stage of the game, it has potential. Now, you trade soybeans often and as well. So knowing that, at least with regard to these patterns, what caution do you see as far as trading soybeans right now, tra trading this contract? No, there's no call. Uh, it's interesting you should pull that up and doesn't surprise me. I did expect that would be your answer to my question. But now that you've given it, uh, as I say, it does not surprise me. Right here, right now, uh, you know, September 25th. Yes. We are in the moment in time 
when we are under maximum harvest selling pressure. So beans okay. are coming out of the field right now. Okay. And uh, we're kind of, and uh, it's this time of year, especially when a market is declining. It is very it's very common looking over the span of 20, 30 years to see bottoms form right in this time frame. Uh, and in fact, and then when you show that daily chart on that November contract, there's no ca- a caution whatsoever. It's not the same hey, John, we're going to buy to make. We're going to break. Uh, hold on for a second. Steve Rhodes with TFN. We'll be right back. Adding stock options to your portfolio can be a major game changer, but the full complexities of these instruments can oftentimes elude even the most experienced traders. Whether you're a seasoned trader looking to sharpen your knowledge on options or you're completely new to the market, Teddy Kekstat is here to help. On Wednesday, September 27th from 4 p.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time, Teddy is hosting a live stream that will teach you how to capitalize on time with calendar stock option spreads. Teddy will also go over how to trade stocks and other market movements without large capital allocation, how to expand portfolio diversification, how to maximize potential returns, basic entry and exit techniques, and more. If that wasn't enough of a reason to attend, Teddy will also be answering all questions live. If you're serious about making money in this market, head over to the front page of TFNN.com today to sign up for Teddy's live stream. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We're taking a look at soybeans out there as a potential trade. John, are you still on the line? I don't think so. Okay. So let me add one thing. So we'll take his understanding, his great uh, fundamental analysis of what's going on inside the commodity markets out here. And I uh, said that we're in extreme selling pressure. And so and we're taking a look at a bottom. Now, this is the 90, uh, 32 years worth of data for the uh, soybean contract out. And we can see that it typically bottoms right around the October 2nd time frame. What's today? September 25th. So you know, we don't use these right to the T. We use these as more of a guideline. So at the same point in time, when soybeans typically bottom, historically, at least over 32 years, 
years, we've got that bottom signal. Let's go take a look at the uh, Palantir, PLTR. This is for S&P inside the Tiger's Den. And it's looking for a buy point. So the issue here that you've got right now with Palantir, no bottoming pattern. You do have a test of swing point. So the swing point out here that we're, it price tested last week was from August 18th. That swing point had volume of 70 million shares. And it was tested on uh, Wednesday last week with 73 million shares. Typically, when you test a swing point, we're still trading inside it right now with volume. Even if you don't bust through those lows, you'll retest that swing point again. So your potential of a buy point is going to be that swing low from August 18th. And that's at 1368. Now, here's the issues, S&P. Your price closed below that uh, level, that uh, 1368 area, it's going to trigger an A to B equals C to the downside that it's going to take us much, much lower. Now, we look at the weekly and the monthly charts out here, we're trading below profile. So it's trading below support areas out there. So longer term with Palantir, he was pushing that swing point with volume, just didn't bust through it. Maybe what this is really doing, now you're looking for a buy point, is getting ready to set up an A to B equals C D to the downside. Folks, stay tuned for all the great programming. I'll be back with you tomorrow on a terrific Tuesday. Please have a magnificent and marvelous Monday. Thanks for being here. Take care.